Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Among the more expensive and certainly the most relaxing of pastimes is the institution of the Caribbean cruise. We have chartered for you one of the happiest, smoothest, most relaxing of ships. Everything special, everything happy, everything exciting and romantic, and just for you. Doesn't it sound enticing? No wonder people rush to get away from it all. Most people, not quite all, as this story will bear out. Let's hurry and try to catch up to them, Sam. Yeah, why? So I can make certain. Of what? You may think I'm crazy, but that's not the same man. <laughs> you're right, Millie. I think you're crazy. <laughs> mystery drama, A Matter of Customs, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mary Jane Higby and Court Benson. It is sponsored in part by x -Lax and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you'd really like a big car, but you really think you ought to buy a small car, maybe what you ought to buy is a mid-sized car. To be specific, a Buick Century Custom. The Century Custom, you see, offers a lot of the room and comfort you look for in a big car. And the trim size and the V6 engine give you a lot of the benefits of a small car. But the Century Custom has one more thing going for it. It's a Buick. And no matter what size car you're looking for, you just can't do much better than that. I guess I'm lucky. My family's always been healthy. Oh, a touch of constipation now and then. But we've got x lax for that. When you need a laxative, shouldn't your first choice be the one more families buy than any other? That's today's x lax Families like the chocolate it tastes. You like the way x lax works gently overnight for relief in the morning. Next time, make gentle chocolate x lax your first choice for occasional use only as directed. We've always been healthy, and x lax is part of that. This spring, True Value Hardware Stores will go to great lengths to help make your lawn and garden work easier. They offer True Test outdoor extension gourds in 30, 60, and 100 foot lengths to help get electrical power from the house to the mower, trimmer, or barbecue out in the backyard. These heavy duty three wire cords stay strong and flexible in all weather and can't be damaged by most chemicals, oil, or grease. And best of all, True Test outdoor cords from True Value Hardware Stores provide the extra reach you need to cut the grass, trim the hedges, or operate the barbecue anywhere in the yard, not just next to the house. Get True Test heavy duty outdoor cords in 30, 60, or 100 foot lengths, priced from as low as $3.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value Hardware, it's more than just a name. It's a way miniature, eight ports of call, each rich in national identity, Haiti, Jamaica, Aruba, Venezuela, Grenada, oh, uh, forgive me, you caught me leafing through the travel brochures again, I'm beginning to get the wanderlust myself, I mean, just listen, the most gorgeous white beaches in the world, Elegance, entertainment, gourmet food, everything at your fingertips. What else could anyone do but relax and forget that the world is too much with us? But then, as you'll see, it takes all kinds of people. 
Millie, come on. The cab's downstairs already. In a minute, Sam. You know planes don't wait. What are you doing? I'm just making sure the windows were closed and the lights are all off. Oh, I already did that. Oh, you. Who could trust you? I'll just double-check the living room and the dining room. Millie, I got the elevator waiting. So he can wait. Uh Aha. You see, you forgot in the dining room. What? One of the window handles wasn't closed all the way. (laughs) She looks like an angel and she acts like a snoop. That's your little wife. But what would you do without her, Sam? (laughs) If you don't get a move on, Millie, you will be without me. You got everything. Why else would you put up with me for 35 years? I wonder I did. Got tickets? Yes. The passports? We don't need them, but yes. Credit cards? uh, Traveler's checks? Yes, 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 yes. I've got them all. Your glasses? They're right in my pocket. The extra ones? I put some in the big bag. Uh, Oh, just one more thing. What, Millie? Just this shopping bag. Millie, you can't take anything else. We're overweight already. What's in there? My detective novels. You know something? You should have been the first lady cop. (laughs) Eagle Eye Millie. If I was a crook and you were around, I'd take the pledge. Oh, you're just buttering me up. But if I had the chance... Well, I'll give you one right now. What? One last chance to get going, or we're going to miss the boat. Will you move it, Howie? we got to get out to the airport. What's the hurry, Wanda? Mm. I ain't all the way awake yet. Five in the a.m. It's a charter flight. we got to get there early to get good seats. Look, once you get to the boat, you can sleep all you want. If I can sleep for running scared over this deal you got me in. Listen, it's the best break you ever had in your life. Who says? Me. You weren't doing so hot on your own. At least I was clean. Yeah, that's only because you were clean that they wanted you. That's why I could get you the, the, the break with the organization. Look, now, can we get this show on the road and you out of the bathroom? Okay, okay. Uh, you get the elevator and I'll get the bags out on the landing. I'll help. I got my own cosmetic bag. And uh, give me a sling bag. That bag, that that's that's all I can take ashore, huh? It's got everything you need. Overnight stuff, change, your razor to shave the beard off. And, you got your old passport with the right picture? <laughs> Don't worry. It's my key back home. Unless. What do you mean unless? Suppose the big man, suppose Louis Marino decides he'd feel more secure the less people know he's back in the U.S. of A. Suppose he took a notion to waste me. Um, Louis wouldn't do that. (laughs) I wish I was so sure. You can be. On account of the old days. What old days? Hey, wait a minute. Exactly how close were you in the old days with him you could be so sure? Close enough, Howie. But it... It was family. Yeah, I don't like that family business. Howie, nobody but Tony Fats and maybe Artie the pawnbroker know. But it, look, just to set your mind at rest. Set my mind at rest, if you can. What's Louis Marino to you then or now? He's my brother, Howie. Mm. That's practically the only reason I got you into this. Practically? What other reason? I'll tell you that after we get on the boat. May I see your tickets, please? Uh, the, uh, the, the guy already took them. I just want to look at the folder to get your seat number, sir. That's row 8, C and D. The two aisle seats, eight rows back. Hey, wait a minute. We don't get to sit together? I'm sorry, sir. You're quite late. Just six more passengers and we'll be taking off. They all have aisle seats, too. Uh, look, I, I don't like the idea of sitting without... Come the... on, Howie. Don't start a fuss. Yeah, but... but the, listen. Howie, let's go. Okay, Wanda. You take the one on the left. I'll take the one on the right. I, I'll put your bag under the seat, huh? You want to handle your coat? No. Come on, we're blocking the eye. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, is this uh, this shopping bag here under the seat, ma'am? Is this oh, yours? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Is it in your way? I would like to get rid of this here bag of mine. Oh, well, maybe we could put mine up above. You what's in it? Books. Detective stories. Oh. I, I, I don't think they'd let you put anything heavy up there. Oh, dear. What's in your bag? 
I mean, is it heavy? Oh, uh, uh, too heavy, I guess, for... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Just give me a second. Oh, may I shove mine alongside of you? Oh, here, let me help. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I knocked your dark glasses off. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. Oh, dear. Yeah, uh, why don't you go on past me? I'm going to have to look on the floor for my glasses. Oh, let me help you. What happened, Willie? Oh, this gentleman dropped his glasses, Sam. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. I have them. I didn't know you were short-sighted. I'm so sorry. Huh? You short-sighted? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's why I have to wear the glasses. Weak eyes. Well, now, you'd never know it to look at them. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah just get my coat off. You all right, Howie? I've got some nosy old dame here who wants to talk my ear off. Listen, my guy next to me doesn't speak English. You want to trade? It could be safer. Why not? Uh, mind if I join you? Well, the, there was a gentleman who <laughs> was... That's my husband. Oh, dear, I hope he isn't mad at me. Why? I'm afraid I knocked his glasses off. My, my mistake. Oh, no, it is not. I, I, I just forgot he always likes to sit where his left hand is free. Oh. He's left-handed, in case he wants to write. He's a writer? Mm. Well, now, isn't that interesting? With his left hand, too. What books has he written, have you? Uh, uh, I, I don't think he'd want to talk about that. You see, he's on the cruise to, to get away from all that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard Flight 854. Your pilot is Captain Turner, and I am Kathy, your chief hostess. We're about to taxi to the takeoff circle. So we must ask you to put out all cigarettes, bring your chairs to the upright position, and fasten your seatbelts. Such a nice cabin, isn't it, Sam? <laughs> you say that again, particularly under the circumstances. You mean because we got an outside room instead of inside? I think we got somebody else's cabin. Oh, so don't make waves. Particularly on an ocean voyage. <laughs> oh, look. We have a porthole and all. Yeah, I know. We'll have to write the tour people and thank them we got such nice treatment. Oh, and that reminds me. Uh, what reminds you what? You know the fellow I knocked the glasses off of? Who wouldn't sit with me on the plane but sent his wife to sit? Uh, yeah, I, I remember him some. His wife lied about him. How? What way? Remember, she said he was left-handed. Well, he wasn't left-handed, that is. Who? The man whose wife sat next to us on the plane and never said her name. Uh, I'm lost. Millie. You don't listen. The man's wife said he wanted to have his left hand free because he was a writer. Yeah, well, if you say so. So how come when we came aboard with all the things to sign and all, he signed writing? Uh, Millie, I don't know. Maybe the guy is Amber something or other. <laughs> are we on a holiday or aren't we? <laughs> you know we are, precious. 35-year anniversary. Sure. Uh, so we'll concentrate on that and count our blessings. And we have more than enough. <laughs> this wonderful cabin on top of it all. Except I do feel a little guilty. Maybe we're doing somebody else out of what they should have. Well, if we are, we'll soon find out. Meantime, like you said, why should we make waves? What kind of lousy closet is this? I don't know, Howie. Were we supposed to have an inside stateroom? Not the way I heard it, but... So why don't we have to take a run around here? What are you doing? I'm phoning that jerk who said he was the purser. I want to know what don't the do idea... It. What are you talking about? Obviously, there's been a mix-up in cabin assignments. I'm going to get it straightened out right now. If I was you, Howie, I wouldn't. Why not? Under the circumstances, I figure the last thing we want to do is attract attention. <laughs> Some gay little trip this is going to be. And how you figure Louis is... Shh. Well, who's aboard the CIA? So, how would the man himself feel about this pint-sized hot box. That's his worry when his time comes. Right now, ours is to stay real low-key. We remind you that today is not a tender day. 
You may debark straight to the dock. Uh, if you're not going on the tour, La Guayca itself is an You have your glasses, port. dear? Uh, on foot, you well, I don't need them. You better take them. Where are they? Oh, Millie, the I can't keep on going through with these. I, I got to admit, I, I broke them. Church, I got sat on them in the plane. Down. Oh, why'd you turn off what they're telling us? Well, I, I'm tired of being told. I'd, I'd, I'd like to move around by myself. Well, you won't get far without your glasses. What's wrong with your extra pair? <clears throat> well, I, I, I must have forgotten to put them in. Oh, I should have known. Everything I have to do for you, Haiti... Jamaica, Aruba, you didn't really see them? Who had much chance? The boat was so late. Well, you could have looked. Oh, come on, come on. Let's see if I can't get my glasses fixed in Venezuela. Okay, Wanda, this is it. Howie, you don't have to sound like a movie before the big attack. Yeah, why not? Maybe I won't come back either. Oh, come on. Out of this, you and me are going to buy the whole future. For a lousy thousand dollars they're paying to take this cruise? No. For a little deal I set up when we hit Caracas. A deal that's going to put us on easy street. You're not setting up some kind of double cross. No, 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 Howie. My brother Louie will get his chance to sneak into the States, thanks to us. But... Just as long as we're playing outside the law, I'm going all the way. This is our chance to make a stake for the rest of our life. Oh. Well, that's something you never have to know. Just do as I tell you, except for one thing. What's that? When the switch is made, you and Louis are going to exchange clothes. Also, sling bags. You just let me handle the bags. Why? Because, honey, you leave me alone and the future is ours. As I said, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. The right ones and the wrong ones. It's obvious enough who are the wrong ones in our story and by the same token, who are the right ones. But except for the fact they are cruising on the same ship... How could a simple couple like Sam and Millie Gorman affect Howie and Wanda's plans? I shall return shortly with Act Two. You already know that True Value Hardware Stores are your hand and power tool headquarters. But think of them, too, as your tool care centers. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you they offer master mechanic replacement parts that take care of your hardworking tools by keeping them in excellent operating condition. Like master mechanic circular saw blades for your power saw. Choose six and a half, seven, or seven and a quarter inch combination blades for just two fifty each. Or take your choice of plywood blades for just two eighty five each. True Value Hardware Stores also offer the master mechanic seven piece drill bit set. For just two seventy-five, these seven high-speed steel bits are sized from one sixteenth inch to one quarter inch. They come in a plastic storage case. For taking care of your tools after the job is finished, get the Master Mechanic two-drawer tool chest. It's a large twenty-two inch tool chest and features drawers that lock tight when the lid is closed. See these and other Master Mechanic tools at participating True Value hardware stores. Tell them Pat Summerall sent you. If you need a muffler, now you can Midas-size your car in over 800 Midas shops in the United States. I got Midas-sized in Topeka, Kansas. It goes to prove you're never too old. I got Midas-sized in Brooklyn, New York. Words alone cannot express my satisfaction. Once we Midas-size your car, you'll never have to buy a muffler for it again. Because at Midas, if anything ever goes wrong, we guarantee to replace the muffler free for as long as you own your American-made car. Noisy muffler? Don't compromise. Midas size at Midas. I got Midas sized in Waco, Texas. <laughs> you never seen a muffler that size before. The next time you hear that noise, don't compromise. Midas size. In case you didn't know, the 41 Chicagoland Midas dealers can install mufflers on most foreign cars with the same expertise with which they've been installing mufflers on American cars for the past 20 years. The travel folder says of the port of La Guerra, deep enough into Venezuela to capture the wild and wonderful flavors of the South American continent of contrasts, enchanted forests, 
the glittering excitement of silver and glass shopping bazaars. That's for the tourists. But for our story, there is a quiet stroll along the waterfront, then a sudden cut away from the water deep into the narrow streets of the old town, back to the foot of the mountains, and into a cantina. Later, as evening gathers, they return. A bearded man with a sling bag and a blonde girl in a halter, slacks, and a large summer hat. Look, Sam, look. Mm. What, Millie? Who's ahead of us? The mystery man and his mom. Who? Well, you know, on the plane. And I told you they were right across the hall from us on the ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the inside cabin. Come on, let's catch up and talk to them. Why? I don't know. There's something about him that, you know, intrigues me. You're fine. Well, there's something about him that turns me off. What? I think we have his cabin and he has ours. And I don't want to get into some Brannigan about making a change. Oh, don't be silly. We can't be. If we were, he would have complained. Well? On the other hand, why hasn't he? What? Complained. About what? About us being in his cabin, if we are. Well, I, I thought you said we're not. I did, but if we are, why hasn't he? Why hasn't he what? Complained. <clears throat> Maybe I missed something. Mm, maybe we both did. Ah, it's very mysterious. What is? Why does he keep to himself so much with his sexy wife? <laughs> maybe you just said it. No, I, I mean, you go on a cruise for fun. Why don't they mingle? You said he had a heart condition. Oh, I didn't. His wife did. Well, does it matter who said it? He's, he's got the condition. Maybe he, he wants to rest. This is the very first time he's been ashore. It's funny. Take a good look at her and him. I'm looking. You see anything interesting? Look at his shirt. The shoulders. Material's too loose. That shirt doesn't fit him. And the hat. Oh, it's too big. It sits right down on his ears. It didn't this morning. <clears throat> Maybe he had a haircut. He couldn't. You know it was a feast day. The shops were all closed. Come on. Let's hurry and try to catch him, huh? What for? So I can make certain. Of what? Of what I'm seeing. He has the same clothes and a beard and dark glasses as the man that left the ship with her this morning. But... But what? Well... You may think I'm crazy, but that's not the same man. What's your hurry, Wanda? Take it easy. Play it cool. Nosy little dame. What? Don't look around. It's, it's, it's Mrs. Gorman. You're the ones I think got our cabin. The, the door's right opposite us. So? So? She's one of those little dames got to be friends with everyone. She caught Howie and me leaving this morning. What do you mean, caught? Well, we both came out of our cabins at the same time. And she wanted to know, were we going to Caracas on the bus tour? So you told her no? Yeah. I, I said Howie had a cold and it had given him laryngitis-like. We've been holed up for nearly five days and I didn't want anybody to hear his voice again. You know, just in case. Hey, you're a smart kid, sister. Yeah, just the same. Let, let's keep away from Miss Snoop. Here's a gangplank. Let's get on board. You're sure it's all this easy to get back on board? Sure, sure. You go ahead. All we do is hang our landing tags on a bulletin board. Uh, watch your step, sir. Oh, what? Tide is up. The end of the boarding ladder is riding high. Please step down. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a nice time ashore? Oh, yes, thanks. Nothing like change, is there? What? what? Uh, from ship to shore. <laughs> One comes back a new man, no? Huh? <laughs> More like a new woman. Uh, madam could not be improved upon. <laughs> hey, hey. Come on, let's get down to the cabin. Oh, yeah. He's kind of cute. Who is he? The cruise director. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Here come the Gormans. Come on, let's catch the elevator. <laughs> Why'd you have to race me like that, Millie? I told you, Sam, I wanted to catch up with Mr. and Mrs. Rivers. Oh, dear. What is it? They just went down in the elevator. Uh, 
Maybe if we took the stairs and hurry. Now, listen, Millie. That's enough of it. I'm, I'm not going to let you badger people just because of a, a hobby. I wasn't going to badger them. I, I just wanted to see if I'd guessed right. Well, that our sexy shipboard neighbor suddenly changed partners in the middle of the dance? Yes. Oh, that's ridiculous. You don't stop reading those detective novels and those spy stories. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. It's just a game. You don't really believe that's another man. Mm, no. <laughs> but wouldn't it be fun if it was? And we were the only ones to spot it? Hey, you better lock that. All right, Louie. Give, give me your bag. I'll unpack it. Well. Huh. I'll do it myself. Oh, come on. I know where to put things away. I'll find my own places. I like to handle my personal things. Okay. Oh, you and Howie stayed here in this hole the first five days? Yeah, well, Howie stayed out of sight. I circulated a little. Well, how about meals? Well, breakfast you can get in the cabin. Lunch is easy, mostly buffet. But dinner, dinner's chancy. Some open sittings or buffets, but you're supposed to have a regular table at early or late sittings. Do we have one? No, not yet. You see, there's always a midnight buffet, so eating's no problem. We don't want to be too different from anyone else. Uh, how'd you manage that so far? Well, like how he wasn't all that well, we said. He had a heart condition. Oh, great. So the way it is, I can hold up here, see nobody, mind my own business till I get home. Yeah, well, we get to St. Thomas, we got to pass immigration. Well, we'll sweat that out when we get there. And Fort Everglades is customs. <laughs> it's a breeze. We ain't buying nothing. Well, yeah, it could be safer if we had a few things to declare. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, you can have your shopping spree in St. Thomas. The other islands, we stay right here on board. Take no chances. Okay. So the way things stand, no problems. Yeah, you think maybe I'll take a little shut eye. Here, let me get that bag out of your way. It ain't in my way. What's the big deal? I just wanted to... When I get ready to unpack the bag, I'll do it. Any objections? No, Louie. No. None. So go ahead. Enjoy yourself. Maybe you ought to be seen around. I don't need you. All I need is to get back home. Then you're gonna see waves when I really start to rock the boat. You don't want to play bingo tonight? Yeah, I'd rather play Joker 7. Mm -hmm. The game of the girl who deals it. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Why, you old goat. <laughs> She's young enough to be your grandchild. <laughs> what pleases me most is she isn't. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Sam. And so should you. The way you've been going on about our shipmates across the corridor. Oh, I'm just having a little fun. Doesn't mean anything. It's just like me. Having a little fun, it doesn't mean a thing. All right, all right, Sam. You've made your point. I'm going to leave them alone from now on. That's great. We've made too many good friends on the cruise to pay any attention to two people who choose to be on their own. Mm, it's such a pity, though, the poor man is sick. Though, it is sort of the classic thing to do if you're up to any hijinks. What are you talking about? Well, in detective stories, you always have to look out for anyone who's sick or in a wheelchair or is supposed to have been in a coma ever since... Oh, for Pete's sake, Millie, don't start up again. Are you dressed? Yes, I am. Well, then come on. Let's get upstairs or topside or whatever they call it and dance. <laughs> yes, Sam. And you're going to forget that Mr. and Mrs. Rivers. And forget they ever existed, right? Right, darling. I was acting silly. Come on, let's go dance. <laughs> After you, my lady. Thank you, your earlship. I... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Rivers. Mm. Oh, dear, I've knocked your glasses off again. Oh, that's all right. What's happened to your voice? Hey, Millie. Oh, I, uh, I caught a little cold, some uh, laryngitis. Oh. Yeah, well, here are your glasses, Mr. Rivers. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I, I, I was just looking out to see if the air conditioning is... Uh, 
You got some in your cabin? Oh, yes. You don't, and you're not well. Mm. Oh, now, if there's anything no, we no, can no. do... No, 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 that's all right. Maybe, maybe it's just I get, you know, like uh, claustrophobia. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure Oz will come on again. Who are you talking to? The nose from across the hall. That woman. She could be dangerous. Oh, I don't think so. She's just a silly dame. But you, you're something else. What do you mean? You were real anxious to unpack my bag. The bag I switched with Howie, weren't you? Well, I... I, I, I just thought I could do Baby, something. Baby, you've done plenty. I'm what's getting smuggled into the United States. You out of your mind to try to get this past customs, too? Millie, what is it? I thought we were going dancing. What do you want to come up here on deck? Now, just don't say anything till we can get where we're all alone. Over there, by the rain. What is it? Now, you, you, you've you got to forgive me, Sam. The voice is one thing. Maybe he could have laryngitis. But the eyes. The man on the plane, they were light brown. This man, they're dark. And I don't know, piercing, mean, cruel. They give me the shivers. What are you talking about? Mr. Rivers. Only it isn't Mr. Rivers. It's someone else. Just like I said when he came on the boat. Why? What are they up to? Oh, Sam, I'm scared. I'm really scared. Now, here is an adventure not listed in the advertising brochure and not planned for the cruise. Something very far from peace and serenity and relaxation. And with an underlying threat of a danger, Millie Gorman, the amateur detective, could not even dream of. A danger that may be heightened because a desperate man is facing another threat to his security. This one posed by his sister, Wanda. I'll return shortly with Act Three. You've never had a really exotic car, have you? Because you've always felt that you needed something a little more down to earth. But you still want that exotic car, don't you? You know what you need? A Buick Skyhawk. It's small, it's V6 powered. Hey, it's even got a hatchback. Now that's down to earth. But with things like bucket seats, available five-speed manual transmission, and that laid-back, low-down styling, it's not exactly plain vanilla. The Buick Skyhawk. The car you need and the car you want. Remember your last hay fever attack? Your medicine turned out to be just antihistamine. Yes. Next time, arm yourself with ARM, allergy relief medicine. One tablet helps itching, dripping, sneezing, then does what your plain antihistamine won't do for congestion relief, even in your sinuses. Remember, don't give up. Arm yourself with ARM. Get antihistamine relief and more. Take ARM when needed, only as directed. This is WBBM Chicago. Believe it or not, summer is on its way. Some of the flowers are now blooming. You're probably walking around without a coat on. Now, this may not seem very uncomfortable right now, especially after a cold winter, but it can get very muggy and very uncomfortable this summer. So why not look into buying a Bryant Quiet Line Deluxe Central Air Conditioning System? It's the right time to buy Bryant. So call Flamco Heating and Air Conditioning in Cary at 639-4406. He's got the right price. That's Bryant Air Conditioning, the unit that saves you more because it has the lowest EER rating. In fact, it could save you enough money to pay for your Bryant Quiet Line Deluxe in five years. So call Flamco Heating and Air Conditioning in Cary at 639-4406. That's 639-4406. Italian phrase, dolce far niente, which means literally delightful idleness, and by projection, a never-never land, a special world apart, the kind of dreaming, delightful peace a cruise is supposed to create. But 
pact which on this one has been rudely broken by two threats. Let's return first to the one posed in that stuffy little inside cabin from which a notorious expatriate hopes to engineer his illegal return to the States. I didn't want you to find out about that, Louis. I, I, I figured it as, as a stake for both of us. You figured it as a stake for you, you two time and little... No, no, Louis, wait. Listen to me. What could you sell me? If it hadn't been for that interfering woman across the corridor, I'd have gotten somewhere and dumped the chunk overboard. Are you crazy? There's a million bucks in that package. Listen, my life won't be worth a nickel if I don't bring that in. Your life? What about mine? That's what you're being paid to worry about. I'm living up to what I promised to do. Listen, it wasn't my idea. Someone, the, the, the syndicate figured as long as we had this set up, there was a, a whole kilo of, of big H waiting for transport. So I got elected. Who do you think you're kidding, baby sister? Someone offered you a deal. Bankroll this. I want his name. Oh, Johnny Fats. Uh, that figures. Where did he get the dough to buy this package? I don't know. I'm honest, I don't. That figures too. Well, someone's gonna be out of bundle. What do you mean? You kidding? First chance I get, I'm dumping this over the side. Uh, uh you, you sure that's smart? All I care about is getting in, Monda. Once I'm back, though, means nothing. And I don't want something like this to mess up my chances of coming home. It, it, it could mean more than you think. How? Look, you've been away a lot of years, Louie. Some of the boys ain't so anxious to see you back. So it's, it's, it's a little insurance in case things don't go all your way and, and you have to get out again. Well, maybe you got something. Anyways, we, uh... We got some time to think it over. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do, Willie. Tomorrow, when we get to Trinidad and go ashore, I'll have my glasses fixed. And then, as soon as I get a chance, I'll have a close look at Mr. Rivers. Well, supposing you don't agree with me. Well, then I want you to promise to stop playing detective and, and do what we took this cruise for. Enjoy yourself. But I am enjoying myself. Okay. So let's say you're right, Millie. Well, what are you going to do about it? Go to the purser or the captain? Say we got a stowaway aboard? Yes, or, or something like that. Only he isn't, actually. I mean, his passage is paid for. He's like a... Well, a, a substitute. But why? Uh, honey, I don't care. And neither should you. But he might be some kind of criminal. Oh, that's just what I mean. If he is, I don't want you getting mixed up. No, I got no right to be risking your happiness. You are retired at last. Doing the things we always planned. Looking forward to so much more. <laughs> no, Sam, I'm sorry. I don't care who Mr. Rivers is. I just care who we are and that we stay that way. I love you. <laughs> I've made a career out of it. <laughs> Never regretted it. I love you, Millie. Wanda, this, uh, this bundle of age... How'd you figure to get it past the customs? Oh, wait, that was the whole gimmick of setting up Howie as a heart patient. What do you mean, gimmick? Well, listen, Louie, a couple of years ago, uh, before I married Howie, I, well, I was on one of these cruises, and when it came time to pass through customs, well, well you know, it's a big schmear, lugging bags, lifting them, opening them, putting them down. I tell you, it's like a madhouse. So? So, there was this older guy, and he says... I gotta have a porter or a red cap or something. I'm not allowed to lift anything with my heart condition. So the guy says, wait a minute, I'll get you a stevedore. And along comes this guy with a cart. And the heart man goes straight through. No questions. Nobody looks at his baggage even. So the fellow I was with says, hey, how about that? Anytime you want to smuggle something home free, how's that for an angle? <laughs> uh, one time you get a break. No, 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 Louie. I asked around quite a bit. It happens a lot, no matter where you come from. So, maybe. Uh, 
I don't know how long I can take this. Maybe you'd like to go ashore? Nah, no, I risk it. Yeah, but why not you? Trinidad, huh? I could use some rum, maybe, to forget this sweat bath. It's better at Barbados. In Barbados is tomorrow. Trinidad is today. Yeah, yeah, why don't you go ashore and bring back a bottle? Uh, really? What are you doing? Oh, Sam, I thought you were taking a nap. <coughs> well, I was. But not now. What are you up to? Oh, nothing. Really? Oh, I couldn't help it, Sam. The cruise is almost over. And except the time we saw her in Trinidad buying some rum, they've never been out of that cabin. I thought you were going to forget the rivers. Well, I try to, but it isn't so easy. <sighs> well, you got me going about them, too. Well, <clears throat> this may be our last chance today. Yes, St. Thomas is our last island to go ashore. Well, I wasn't thinking of that so much. Today, everybody has to be in the main lounge for immigration. And now I got my spectacles again, maybe I'll have a real good look at Mr. Rivers at last. There they are. Huh? Who? The Rivers. Millie, we've forgotten about them. You promised. Yes, but you promised the first chance you got with your spectacles, you'd look at him. Well, they're coming by now. Here's your chance. But, but Millie, I didn't... Go ahead. How long is this going to take? They said not too long. You got your papers? Don't worry. I got everything I need. You hold my glasses while I check. You better not keep them off too long. Well, Sam? Uh, really? It's the same guy who flew down with us on the plane. Sam, you're lying. Millie, that's the same guy. It's got nothing to do with us, and that's how it's going to be. My... Yes, Sam. 35 years, and you've always been right. I, I want to protect you. I know. So you're right, Sam. Who's arguing? immigration now, and all that remains to do is go through customs, which we'll have to do when we arrive at Fort Everglades, Florida. Now, remember, you may bring in, duty-free, one quart of liquor, which you'll no doubt be buying today. Uh, just one word of warning, anybody with a little cache of uh, grass or anything harder, forget it. You might fool the guys who inspect your baggage, but you can't fool Daisy. Who's Daisy? Special Operative K-9. She's a dog. And don't try to bypass her. She knows. She's trained to sniff out the stuff. Well, that's all. Enjoy St. Thomas. A dog. Who figured on that? Junk. That's really all this is now. We have to ditch it. Maybe not. Uh, how about the rum bottle? We emptied that yet? Not yet. We're going to empty it now. Pour it down the sink. Good rum. Why? We dry it out. Put the heroin in it. Stopper it tight enough the dog can't sniff it. Oh, that's that's an awful chance. <laughs> Not really. We won't be taking it through customs. What do you mean? I'll show you after we go ashore. Yeah, it's about time for me to stretch my legs. <laughs> The liquor will be delivered right to the ship. Here, here, thank you. We better get back. In no hurry. I gotta find my pigeon. What are you talking about? Do me a favor, hon. Go keep that liquor salesman busy while you get us another bottle for the cabin. Bottle of what? Anything, just so long as you keep him busy. I got bourbon, okay? Couldn't care less. I got what I want. <laughs> Even more than I expected. Louie, what is it? Look there, our neighbors. The nosy lady buying a package of liquor just like us. Come on, Wanda. Now we can go back to the ship. Uh, just a note for all of those who bought your quarter of liquor today. Before we sail for St. Thomas, it'll be placed outside your cabins. Uh, please check and make sure you have it. Now, more about our plan. Did we check our liquor? 
Don't worry. I got in the closet already. I also got rid of our extra bottle. What extra bottle? The bottle that doesn't contain liquid. That has the hard stuff. The heroin? That's it. But where? You gotta keep the brain working every minute, Wanda. I lifted a bottle from the Gorman's package and replaced it with a hot bottle. What better way to bypass the dog and U.S. Customs? And even if we don't, I'm still safe. If they do find the H, it ain't on me. How could you stash it on our neighbor's duty-free cotton? There's a special tape that seals it. Easy. While you kept the liquor man busy buying our extra bottle, I filched enough tape to reseal the cotton after I made the switch. How do we get the stuff back? I checked the manifest. Mr. and Mrs. Sam Gorman, 734 West 72nd Street. Soon as we hit the Big Apple, we make one little detour there to pick it up. Well, what do we say? Just there was a mix-up. And if they don't buy that? It's a nice, quiet neighborhood. Anything could happen. <laughs> Such a wonderful cruise. Such a wonderful time. But, oh, Sam, how good it is to be home. Yeah. What's wrong? Well, I, I could have sworn I double-locked the apartment when we left. But I only had to use one key. Now, Sam, don't start to worry. The moment we're... Well, who could that be? No one knows where... I'll get it. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, just let me handle this. Yes? Oh, hi, Mrs. Gorman. You remember us from the cruise? Oh, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Rivers, won't you come in? Well, just for a minute. You see, there, uh, there was a mix-up in some of our baggage. You got our liquor package instead of yours. Really? Hmm. I mean, you're sure this one here is yours? Yeah, I'm sure. And that's what I'm taking away. Well, now, just a minute. This package has my name on it. Let's not argue, Mrs. Gorman. This is a gun, and I want what's mine. And that's what uh, you'll get, Louis. Oh, well, Freeze! Uh, You're covered all over. Six guns. You're a big fish, Mr. Marino, and as long as you picked up the bait, we want to make sure you don't get away. I know I promised, Sam, but won't you forgive me? <laughs> How did you know to call the cops? And how did you do it without me knowing? While you were checking through customs, I called them. How did I know to? Sam, I just can't help it. I just notice things. <sighs> the special seal on our liquor package was suddenly on backwards. So I steamed it off to have a look. That's when I knew. How could I tell you? You wouldn't have let me do what I did. <laughs> Millie, I'm a retired man. I want to enjoy the quiet I thought I'd earned. Couldn't you? <laughs> yes, Sam. I've had enough kicks. <laughs> you know, I'm ready to retire, too. There are now plenty of charges stacked up against Louis Marino through little Mrs. Gorman's sharpness for illegal possession of drugs, smuggling, and any number of other charges to put him away for the rest of his life. I don't know if there's a moral in this, except that maybe if you want to be crooked, don't mess with the innocent. It's only the ones without any larceny in their hearts you can't figure at all. I'll be back shortly. Mr. Winkowski, I understand you're the... the manager of the supermarket. Yes, may I help you? My wife is cooking swordfish surprise tonight. Thank you, but I've already made plans. No, no. The thing is, I have to know which would taste best on it. These fresh lemons or this bottle of Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. Well, as the store manager, I have to remain impartial. I couldn't uh, All I'm asking is which I should buy. Big deal. Sir, when I became manager of this store 12 years ago, I took an oath to remain neutral in hey, these matters. Hey, I... nobody's around. Should I buy these fresh lemons? <clears throat> well, they do taste like fresh lemons. How about this Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice? The juice of fresh lemons, 100%. No preservatives? No. Then they both taste and smell like fresh lemons. Exactly. So come on, which one should I buy? Just between uh, us. Of course. The Minute Maid squeeze bottle here is definitely more convenient. So you'd say I should buy... The Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. All right. 
right, Winkowski, that's it. What? I'm Jenkins from the front office. Oh, You're in a lot of trouble, fella. No. You took an oath 12 oh, years ago. Come with me. Minutes right. made 100% pure lemon juice in your grocer's freezer. Now fresh lemon juice doesn't have to come in a lemon. If you're thinking about buying a shirt, or even if you're not, I'd like to make an announcement. It is possible to actually love a shirt. Some shirts are special. They're made a little bit better, and they make you feel a little bit better every time you put them on. They're called Arrow Shirts. If you'd like to feel that way about a shirt, slip yourself into an Arrow Kent. A shirt that's become an American classic because men really love them. What they love is Kent's quality, button for button and stitch for stitch. Kent's style that looks like today but doesn't look like yesterday a month after you bought it. And Kent's cut, full cut with exact neck size and sleeve length so it looks good and fits good. Kent feels good too, and it's easy to take care of because it's a gentle blend of Dacron polyester and cotton. Slip into an arrow Kent. More men do than any other kind. It's hard to miss with arrow. America's shirt maker. This is what is generally known as the hedge. Except, honestly, in this case it isn't. We have brought you a story that might happen on a Caribbean cruise. To the best of our knowledge, it never has. Except this once, in imagination. We urge all of you listening to consider that it would never happen on your cruise through that romantic sea and with all the delights the islands can bring you. Our cast included Mary Jane Higby, Court Benson, Joan Copeland, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. to fellow Republicans in Washington. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. About 1,200 people gathered at a GOP fundraiser in Washington Thursday night. Phil Jones has a report. The former president answered Democratic critics, including Vice President Mondale, saying he is not ready for the political rocking chair and he is not interested in being muzzled from criticizing the Democrats who succeeded him. The last time I was in Washington in March... I met with the cabinet, the Republican congressional leadership, my White House senior staff. I worked on a foreign policy speech. I watched a wonderful play from the Kennedy Center's presidential box and met with a former governor in the Oval Office. It was almost as if the election had gone the other way. George McGovern thinks it did. Mr. Ford criticized President Carter's record in holding down inflation, but congratulated the Democratic administration for emulating old Ford policies of trying to lower taxes and limiting government. Phil Jones, CBS News, Washington. More news in a moment. What's a lonely sound? That's one for sure. And there's another. Most of the time, loneliness doesn't make sounds. It's all inside you. Loneliness. Nobody needs it. Nobody wants it. Everybody experiences it. There's a cure for loneliness in the strength that families offer. In family values of love and helping. Remember, you're part of God's family. 
and you can find the strength of family values in your house of worship. When you join in activities and work with others, you're giving of yourself. You're not lonely. And there's also help for the problems you face. Find the strength of family values in your house of worship. A public service of religion and American life, the Advertising Council, and this station. In South Korea, U.S. military officials are declining comment on the recall of the third-ranking American Army general in that country. President Carter has ordered Major General John Singlob to come to Washington and report in person to him. In an interview with the Washington Post, Singlob said the president's decision to withdraw American forces from Korea is a mistake and said it will lead to war with North Korea. The leaders of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Syria met in Riyadh Thursday in a mini-summit, and Egyptian radio says the surprise victory of Israel's hawkish Likud bloc was discussed. An aide to Syria's President Assad said the need for military preparations seems to have taken priority over peace arrangements. In Kuwait, a newspaper called for the creation of an Arab super-defense alliance patterned after NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Kenya has banned all game hunting in the East African nation in an effort to stop the steady decline of Kenya's wildlife population. All hunting licenses and hunting areas in Kenya will be converted into photographic licenses and areas for picture-taking safaris. One official of the Kenyan government says the ban will stop poachers from masquerading as hunters. He said poachers constitute a great threat to wildlife through their trade in ivory, rhino horn, and the skins of big cats. The White House says President Carter disagrees with Richard Nixon's view that a president has the inherent power to break the law. A Carter aide says the president feels such a philosophy is a tragic mistake. In the third of his interviews with David Frost, broadcast Thursday evening, Mr. Nixon said of burglaries, eavesdropping, and other activity against dissidents, when a president does it, that means it is not illegal. President Carter on Thursday announced a new policy of trying to substantially reduce U.S. arms sales to foreign countries. The president said the virtually unrestrained spread of conventional weaponry threatens stability throughout the world. Now this. In Paris Thursday night, champagne flowed freely on track J of the Gaudelio Railroad Station as the Orient Express departed for the last time on a 1,900-mile journey to Istanbul. The famous train, long a legend of mystery and romance, will be canceled after an 88-year run. The railroad administrations of the five nations served by the Orient Express decided to end it for economy reasons. In the height of its glory, the Express was made up of luxury sleeping and dining cars. The Pullmans were lined with red velvet and mahogany. The diners served fresh oysters and caviar. On its last run, the Orient Express carried only 18 passengers. No food is being served aboard. This is Doug Poling, CBS News. Come to the Ramble tomorrow night at Great America, a benefit for United Charities from News Radio 78, WBBM, Chicago. Good evening, everyone. It's 1133. This is Alan Bickley on News Radio 78. It's a warm and stormy night around the Midwest.